Okay, we're back on node one, and I wanna show you a little bit about how to get some cluster information out of SQL Server itself. Basically, we're gonna look at cluster nodes and we're gonna look at disks. Now, the first thing, the first way you could do this is to look at the server property. The computer name physical net BIOS property will give you just a single computer name. And that of course is the name that the SQL VI is routing to currently. So that is when I connect to SQL Server through SQL VI, remember it gets routed to a specific node and this tells you which node it's getting routed to. Now, the other way that we have to do it is to use the function virtual server nodes and that lists all of the nodes in the cluster and it tells you which one is currently the owner and you get the exact same output from the DMV right here, the exact same output from the DMV. And the DMV is the preferred method these days. The function is there for backward compatibility. Now you have the exact same thing for your drives. If you wanted to see your shared drives, these are the drives that we have right now that are part of the SQL Server cluster. And I can get a DMV that shows me the exact same thing. Now these things can be really handy, especially either this one or these two for a couple reasons. First and foremost, the cluster nodes DMV can show you all of the nodes that belong to this instance of SQL. So if you've got a multi node cluster with multiple instances on there, you may not have all of the, all of the, the nodes involved in this one instance. So you may want to see which instances are on which nodes, and this is a really good way to do that. Secondly, this is a really good way to find out how often your SQL box has failed over or if it's failed over. If you set up a job that queries this and saves that information to a table, say every five minutes, every 10 minutes, whatever, right? Whatever you think your tolerance threshold is, and it really depends on how important that server is as well, right? But if you save that, say maybe even with a timestamp, right? Then you can keep track of that. And if the, if the node changes, you can send an alert to say, hey, the node has changed, go take a look at it. One of the problems I've seen many times, and I think I may have mentioned this in the slides, is that quite often a server will fail over and it does everything so well, maybe it fails over in the middle of the night, and it fails over so well that nobody really notices for weeks. And then when there's a problem, say, on the node that it's on now, the server itself goes down because the other node still has a problem and nobody realized it. So if they don't have proper monitoring in place, or even if they do have proper monitoring in place, they're still going to call you and blame you as the DBA when something goes wrong. So you might want to do some of your own cluster monitoring as well. And this is just a really easy way to do it. So you can just set up something from an external box that pings that SQL VI, uh, maybe a PowerShell script, right? So that pings that, that SQL VI and then just queries the uh, the OS cluster nodes DMV and just writes that to a table with a timestamp and then you can do a comparison. If the node, if the active node isn't the same as it was last time, then send an alert and tell somebody that the node failed over because you, that's the kind of thing you really want to know about. It failed over for a reason, right? And you want to know what that reason is and maybe even get it back on that node. Maybe this node is, is known to not be as stable or maybe it's not in the same data center as the other one and it's further away from the other clients and the pipe is smaller. And so maybe it doesn't work as well because if it fails over and you don't know about it and all of a sudden things just start acting really weird, you know, ETL loads start taking longer or, you know, client requests start taking longer, then you may want to look into that. So you could have some problems from one node to another. I've seen plenty of times when, 
you know, a database ran just fine on one node and had problems on another node. Maybe that other node has known problems. And if you don't know that a failover happened, then it could be the furthest thing from your mind to check that. So definitely set up your own alerting. I don't care what the Windows guys have, what the networking guys have, set up your own alerting because almost always yours is going to be a lot more reliable. I've seen it too many times.